Hello, my name is Michael Evans. This is what Mike learned from what Mike painted. So I painted mini for a year. I posted weekly episodes showing what I've done that week. Sometimes I do quite a few mini, sometimes not so many. But uh, basically I showed you how I was progressing. Now I'm going to take a moment and go over some of the things I've learned uh, over that time. So we'll start out with uh, some of the things I've learned to use. So, little plastic shot glasses. Uh, you can usually get 40 to 50 of them for a buck or two, maybe three or four at most at, the dollar, at do most dollar stores. They work great, They well, holding water, either both to rinse off your brushes and uh, to water down paints while you're mixing them. It works great for that. Also, get a little a sticky tack, you know, like you you would use to uh, put up posters so you don't have to put tacks or nails in the wall. Use that, stick a mini on there, and it works as a base to hold it. So base, you can get really good bases for like 40, 50 bucks, or well, probably not that much, probably 10, 12 bucks. I don't know, I never bothered to go look, really look into it because I use this and it works great because it gives you a lot of work, uh, it gives you a lot to work with while it's moving around your, your uh, mini. So like I say, these things, especially if you're starting out and you don't want to spend the money on one of those uh, uh, the mini holders. Now, uh, a lot of want, a lot of people, a lot of mini painters go for wet palettes. I've never, I haven't got around to figure out a wet palette yet. I was going to try, but like I said, I got this for like a, a buck twenty-five. I think the dollar store works fairly well. Uh, it's enough to mix uh, mix paints. You don't need a whole lot of paint for mini, so it just a little, a little drop of this, a little drop of that. Sometimes end up with a whole lot more than I really needed. So I ended up with probably wasting a lot more paint. So you figure out what palette, all the power to you. If not, dry palette works. When you go to fast food places and they give you a napkin, save them. They're great for wiping off your brush. They're great for, like say, if, you, if you're trying to dry brush, just wipe, them off, wipe the paint off on there and the excess paint off on the napkins and then uh, dry brush on. Spill water, great. If you have paint in the wrong spot and you're far enough along that repainting it is going to be more work, you can water down the, pa the paint in the wrong spot and then use the napkin to soak it up. Well, usually you clean that up. Yeah, fast food napkins, if you uh, save these, they will come in handy. Now, It's best to keep going with what you got. Like I say, if you painted a mini, uh, like I say, if you're not quite satisfied with it, anything, a painted mini looks better than a non-painted mini. But if you're really unsatisfied, you can get these uh, Simple Green Cleaners. Uh, soak it in uh, Simple Green Cleaners for a couple of days. Uh, three or four days. And, uh, it will wash the paint, even if you varnish them. Uh, I've, I've tr now I've never any of the actual minis I've painted. I haven't changed. I haven't uh, used this to take anything off. But I did paint a couple of army men, and I even varn painted and varnished a couple of army men to see if this works. And they do work. Now this one, if you leave the car wash one, um, if you leave it in that for too long, it'll start eating away at the mini. Uh, this uh, uh, all-purpose cleaner is much more safe. Like I say, if, if you put even if you put it in, you leave it there, uh, check it every couple days, try washing it off with uh, some water and uh, an old toothbrush. An old toothbrush is another good thing to have. Uh, help clean off the minis when you're cleaning when you're cleaning them before you prime and paint them. Also, if you do go and uh, strip them. 
uh, it helps you clean the paint off. But yeah, simple simple green and a toothbrush are good. This thing, the Godsend. Uh, it's a uh, main fine main fire glass on the base with an LED light. Now this is meant to be a uh, soldering uh, for soldering. Um, so it has this little extra attachment here, which isn't necessary, but you can also use this to help hold your mini in place. I haven't done that. Basically, I just use the main fine glass and the, and the uh, LED light. You can get some yeah, artist versions. You can get the, this version. I got this off of Geek, which is an app like Wish for like 20, uh, 20 some bucks. Best 20 some bucks I've bought, I spent. Especially when it comes to the mini painting, this thing makes life so much easier because it makes it so much easier. To see. Just the main fine glass part makes it so much easier. To see. Main fine glass and light it changes. It's, it's a it's a game changer. Now, when it comes to paints, uh, I have some Citadel paints. I have some uh, Army paints. Um, but most of my paints are just cheap dollar store acrylic uh, normal paints. Now, what I've seen online, uh, if you're just beginning or an expert, you're not really going to notice that much. You're going to there's some difference between the, uh, the 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 good stuff and the uh, the cheap stuff from the dollar store. From, uh, but uh, if it's really only knows, like I say, if you're just beginning or an expert from what I've seen, you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna notice it much afterwards. It's only like when you're between like uh, when you're good to when you're really good to really to great. If you're beyond great or or beyond or just before really good, you're not gonna notice that much difference. So I'm 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 pretty good painter. So. For me, the cheap stuff is just as good as anything else. Now I've seen like uh, I've seen examples of award-winning pa uh, mini painters that use the cheap stuff, and like I say, for a some you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the cheap stuff and the good stuff. Uh, so if you're just starting out, don't worry about too much about the quality of the paint. Some of the paints, are a little, the good stuff is a little easier to use. Um, but basically, play around with the paints, see what see what you can do with what you have. Uh, try bring in if you want because the, the good stuff. I would suggest starting with the cheap stuff and then working the good stuff in, and uh, so that way you can see what you can do with what paint. But again, like I say, I'm at the early end where you can't really know that much difference. So, you know, take what I say there with a grain of salt. Now the brushes. You need really fine tip brushes. You can get really expensive stuff from like our stores. You can get expensive ones, good, and spent, good ones, but kind of expensive from uh, hobby stores. Or you can get cheap stuff, cheap ones online. And again, I find that it's a, it seems to be a lot like uh, uh, the paints, where uh, if you're beginning or amazing, you're gonna uh, you're not gonna notice a difference. If you're like say really good to uh, up next to amazing, that's when you'll see the difference between the two. Now you just got if you're gonna get the cheap stuff, the cheap ones, get a lot of them because they will sort of uh, they will break down the the the, the, the bristles will spl uh, will spl uh, splay and uh, they won't hold up point. So I I got a thing of twenty of them when I start when I uh, was a couple of months into painting and uh, I gone through maybe six or seven of them in about a little more than half a year. So the cheap ones will, if you care for your brushes, they will last for a little while, 
but they're not going to last as long as the expensive ones. But then again, I also got expensive ones from our store, and they la well, they lasted longer than uh, what the, the cheap ones, but not by much. So learn to take care of your brushes. The, the better you take care of your brushes, the longer they're going to last. So the, the one, like I say, I was going through them faster at the beginning than I am now. But uh, like I say, if you're just beginning, if you're uh, going to get the brushes, I would probably suggest getting cheap brushes to begin with, just to figure out what you're doing. Get a lot of cheap brushes, and uh, basically once you get once you know what you're doing. Uh, then get into these expensive brushes that are going to last longer because by then you probably know how to take care of them better. Now that's pretty much the equipment side. Uh, attitude wise, first thing you should know, you're probably not going to start out amazing. You're not going to start out winning awards. So be willing to accept that, uh, like I say, you're probably going to be disappointed with what, with what you're doing. But a painted mini is better than an on-painted mini, unless it's really atrocious. And no matter what you think, it's pro you're probably not doing a really atrocious job. Like I've seen, the, like I say, I've seen factory painted ones where the colors were shifted in the wrong places. And like I say, so part of a shirt was skin color, part of an uh, arm was uh, a blue, uh, yeah, you know, these things were, you know, just the colors were completely off. Something went wrong, probably went wrong with the, the, painter, the painting machine that it went through, the machine that it went through to paint it. Still better than on painted mini, in my opinion. So basically, if you try to remember, an on a painted mini is better than on painted mini. So it's best to when you're painting when you're trying to figure out okay is this good don't get up close and look at all the mistakes put it on the table sit back where you will be uh, when you're playing and think okay on the board that doesn't look so bad i'm not saying that like say if you make a big mistake don't fix it but there are very few mistakes you can make while painting minis that cannot be undone that's important to remember too. Now, I'm not saying like go directly to like the simple green to fix your mistakes. I'm saying that, like I said, if you, oh, you painted the guy's face silver by mistake when it's supposed to be a thing over here. You painted here, a dot right here, silver was over here. That's fine. Uh, if you get it quick enough, you can wash it off. If you don't, you can just paint over it uh, with more flesh tone. Um, the mistakes you make are, you know, are fine. You can't correct them. Basically, what basically what all that boils down to is, uh, no, good enough is good enough, and and move on to your next mini. As you go, you'll learn. I've gotten a little better. I also gotten a lot faster painting these. So, while my quality didn't go up hugely uh, from the time I started to now, at least I don't think it did. Uh, I'm going to do another video where I'm going to go, I'm basically going to make a clip, a clip episode where I'm going to go through and uh, clip together some of the painting I did from my from the past, uh, what my painted videos, just to see how the progress went and maybe I'll surprise myself. I don't think so, but um, I basically learned, okay, will this look good on the table? Yes. Am I happy with how it looks on the table? Uh, if the answer is yes, I stop painting and move on. While painting, it's, it's all right to experiment. Uh, it's all right to make, so basically it's all right to make mistakes. It's also a good thing to experiment. Uh, the more you play around with the paints, the more you can see what your paint can do. Um, like I say, for, for first several, the flesh tones, that I had came, were more orange than I wanted them to be. It took me a while to learn that uh, a darker, uh, like you need a darker base under the flesh tones in order to get the flesh tones looking uh, looking right. 
Uh, so I prime white. So painting the, f the flesh tone that I was that I had on white made it look orangey. Uh, I was learning that if I put a brown or a black under on the, at least where the flesh should be, um, it turned out it turned out looking right. Now there are people that uh, that prime in black. I find it much. I find white much easier or white uh, primer much easier to work with because it's much easier to see the detail. However, like I say, I had to play around with the paints to figure out. How to get the flesh tone looking right you since I wanted to, uh, to uh, prime white to make it easier on me. Now there's a lot of people that will prime prime black mainly because a lot of this coloring looks better black. It really depends on what you're going with and again that comes down to playing with your paints. Uh, figure out what you can do with what you have. The uh, Now I'm not I don't feel I'm good enough to, to uh, paint with black primer, to use black primer, mainly because I find that a lot of details are hidden when you're using the black primer, and I need to see the details because I'm not good at flourishing. So I can most, I mostly stick with the details that are there, and if I will flourish lightly if I have to. Uh, that might just be a me thing. Now, when you're painting, there's really the three things to remember. Be patient, take your time, pay attention. Those three things, if you can do that, uh, basically is everything else works off of that. Be patient, take your time, pay attention. Also, you're only going to get out of this what you put into it. Uh, if you don't push yourself, you're not going to go any farther. Now, for quite a stretch in the middle, uh, for probably about half the year, I think, I sort of hit a groove and I stayed there. I probably could be better by now if I had to have pushed myself to try harder, if I had to let myself make more mistakes, but I found like a groove that I'm like, okay, I'm happy right here. Uh, I don't mind, I like how this looks on the table. Um, it works pretty much across the board, so I basically stuck with that. And I, like I say, about a few months, about a, month, a few months ago, yeah, uh, yeah I go, you know what? I can push this a little farther just to get myself, uh, you know, that much farther. Um, so I could probably, far, I could probably be farther ahead in my, you know, painting skills if I had to push myself earlier. But I didn't really feel a need. So, like I say, I'm still playing around with shading and with highlights because I didn't push myself earlier to do that. If I had to push myself earlier, I might, I might be able to be doing that fairly well right now. But I, again, it's basically you only get out, you only get out what you put in, and I was fine with what I was getting out, so I wasn't putting any more in. If you want to get more out, put more in, but be willing to make mistakes. If you're like I say, if you hit a groove and you're fine with it, there is nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go out and try to win awards. You don't have to, you know, uh, be the very best mini painter there is. Be happy with what you're doing. If you're happy with what you're doing, that's fine. Uh, I don't think anyone's really gonna go go. I'm not playing that game. That you know, the shading around the eyes isn't consistent, or the, you know. The highlights aren't there. It's not, you know, uber uh, realistic. I'm not playing this game. Most people are going to go, oh, cool. You painted the minis. That looks awesome. Let's play. So, uh, and like, like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there will be people who will criticize your painting. Uh, don't play with them. My suggestion, do not play with those people. Uh, but... Basically, as long as you're happy with what you're doing, and uh, then that's great. If you want to get better, push yourself. But 
if you're pushing yourself, you're going to make mistakes. You got to be aware of that and be willing to make them and be willing to learn from them and be willing to sort of set the set again. No, when enough is enough for this one, sit it aside, try another one. You're going to get, you will get better if you keep at it. 99 times out of 100, you will. Uh, is there anything else? That is mostly what I learned. Oh, if you ever have trouble, YouTube is full of people who do tutorials on mini painting. Watch the tutorials. Uh, watch the tutorials while you're doing such and such. Realize you're not going to be able to do what they're doing because they've been doing it longer. They've practiced more. They put more into it so uh, by this time than you have. But watch what they're doing. Keep at it. Eventually you will get it. Uh, if you really, if that's something you really, if you really want to do what they can do, watch how they do it and basically keep doing it wrong until you're finally able to do what they're doing. So, uh, there are a lot of people out there who just want to help. They want to see the hobby grow. They want to see the painting hobby grow. They want to see the gaming hobby grow. Uh, they have great tutorials out there. Uh, this BGG will have tutorials. Uh, have, you know, there's a lot of people doing blogs for painting. Go online, find someone that, you know, that does really good tutorials. Do what they're doing. Make the mistakes until you can do what they're doing. Now, like I say, it's, it, it, you're probably going to be really disappointed when you know you watch them do it like oh that looks easy and then you're doing it and you it looks nothing like what they what they did uh your results end results are going to be nothing like theirs that's fine keep trying or say i don't need to do it <laughs> basically you got to be willing to either keep trying until you get it right or say i don't really need to have it looking like that i'm fine with what i'm doing already either one is good as long as you're happy with that. The most important thing about mini painting is that you're enjoying it. Uh, but I think after this, the, this past year, that is the majority of what I've learned from mini painting, or learned about mini painting. So thank you for watching and uh, I hope I help someone. <laughs>